Okay, so let's put the finishing touches on our hamburger menu. Um, we've got our hamburger menu. This is pretty much at least how I want the menu to look when it is open and when the uh, subcategories or when the sub menu is showing. So when everything's showing, uh, I'm pretty happy with how this menu looks. It's got us a little box shadow there, which is fine. Uh, the only problem is, you know, when you click on the hamburger menu, it disappears. When you click on the hamburger menu, it appears. Uh, that's fine. It's functional. It's uh, it's entirely no problem. But I'd like to add a little bit um, of an animation to, to this menu. And in particular, since the the hamburger menu is on the right side of the page I'd kinda like it to slide in like from off the web page to, to slide in from the right and then when I'm done with it it should slide out uh, to the right again but I do not want to make a complex animation I don't want to mess with keyframes and stuff like that I want to do a simple animation and when we talk about simple animations in CSS, what we're typically talking about is transitions. Transitions are really the simplest type of, um, of animation. And a transition occurs when a CSS property on an element changes. All right. And this property, the property that you can do transitions on, they have to take uh, real numbers. It can't be, you know, for example, display. It would be nice if we could do um, display none to display uh, block. But there's no transition there and there's no range of numbers there that, you know, the browser can transition over. So uh, things like that cannot be uh, animated. Um, and the thing is that the animated element has to exist before and after the transition. So it has to start from one place and then end up at another place. Uh, it doesn't have to be a place. It can start from an opacity of uh, zero to an opacity of one. So it can just kind of fade in uh, like that. But there has to be some property you can transition over. All right. So let's go ahead and look at how we can do that with our menu and the property I am going to transition over I'm not going to use you might think well this this menu has and I mean if we look at the CSS for and this is our main menu panel so if we look at the CSS for our uh, main menu panel again uh, initially it has a display of none and uh, eventually it has a display of block that's not going to do for that's not going to work for a transition um, but you do see we have a position of absolute and um, it's right value is zero which means the right edge of the panel lines up with the right edge of the container and in this case that's the the right edge of the hamburger menu and you can see uh, right there those two things are in alignment which is great um, and you might think you could just somehow uh, move that and I, I there's probably a way you can do that but uh, the the easier way I don't like messing too much with um, you know, right, left, top, bottom values. Uh, I try to stay away from them as much as possible uh, just because um, transforms and translations have kind of become the newer, uh, the, the newest way to um, position things. Okay, you might start out with a right zero, but uh, then you can position that further with a, um, with a transformation. So let me talk about transformations a little bit. Um, so I'm going to transform 
where this the location of this uh, panel all right of this main menu panel and I'm gonna do that by translating it along the x-axis okay first I'm gonna do zero and I'm gonna show you that zero I'm gonna save this zero doesn't do anything okay zero is where it's at all right and the, the thing to, to know about translate uh, X, uh, yeah, you can play around with these values, but values you should uh, know what happens to are 50%. I mean, zero is just, you know, that's where it is. Uh, but if you do 50%, okay, look what happened to that panel. It actually moved off to the side a little bit. And what happened? Well, it moved... 50% of its, um, you know, width on the x-axis. So, uh, you know, the menu has a certain width. If you look, the right side of this hamburger menu is now right along the center, okay, is aligned with the center of the panel, all right? So basically, that's because we moved it, uh, we moved it over 50% of its width. Okay, if this was translate Y, it would be 50% of its height, uh, and so on. So if we move it 100% uh, of its width, the it should end up with the left side of this panel uh, being aligned with the right side of the hamburger menu, and that's pretty close to what we want. So there it is, and it's pretty much, uh, you know, it's not quite off the page, but it's pretty close. So how do we get it uh, completely off the page, and what is this uh, little distance here that we're missing? Well, this little distance here that we're missing, I happen to know, is uh, one REM, because I used a Flexbox for this, and it has a padding of one rem. And if you need to know that, you can just open up your dev tools and uh, inspect that. And if I click on that, um, the flex container. Uh, well, it says it has a padding of um, of 16. We could probably find it over there, but 16 is one rem. Remember, an M is uh, the width of uh, the letter M, and uh, a rem is the width of the letter M for the root font. And my root font I'm keeping at um, 16. So that's my padding right, and I'm doing everything in rems. If I tried to do this in EMs, then if I change the font up here, uh, this menu wouldn't be shifted over maybe the right amount. So um, it would, you know, would depend on the font down here. So I'm just going to go ahead and in the right, instead of saying zero, I'm going to say one negative one rem. Okay. And I think, yeah, that's going to shift it over. So now it's just perfectly right off the screen, uh, which is where I want it. Okay. And you can see that, you know, there's this scroll bar here. Uh, we want it to look like this. And then the scroll bar is uh, saying that there's more stuff over there. We're going to take care of that in a minute. But let's, let's do the animation first and actually I'm just gonna you know I'm just gonna set this back to zero for uh, a second just so I can kind of see uh, where that is and so here's where we're starting out and I want them the panel to slide in from the right okay so I want to ha I have to figure out where I'm ending up and where I'm ending up is um, is dictated by this, okay? When the main menu panel also has a class of main menu open, all right? Right now, it's display block. Oh, and by the way, I should say 
uh, you know, when I click that, the menu disappears. When I click that, it appears. So we can't do transitions with uh, display. So I'm actually going to uh, get rid of this here. I don't know if it will do something crazy like it won't do display block. But I'm going to get rid of that and save it and uh, see what happens here. Okay, so I'm clicking it and, okay, just to prove to you that that is changing things, let's go into our view dev tools and check out the header drop down. And right now, uh, main menu open is false, so it is not open. Okay, and I'm clicking it, now it is open. All right, so no changes in the display. And I think that's display block by default uh, because that is ultimately a div. So yeah, that makes sense that it is a display block. So I'm not gonna worry about that one either. Um, and like I said, I'll, I'll change this value later, but uh, there's my starting point, just not quite off the screen. So my ending point is going to be transform translate uh, zero. That's what we had it uh, at the beginning. So now um, main menu open is true. So take a look. Okay, now it's off the screen mostly, and now it's where I had it in the beginning. So that's working pretty well. Uh, now I got to get the transition working, which is not so bad now because I've got this transform element, okay, that um, ultimately uh, through its function takes a range of values. So this is what's going to be uh, transitioned over. So let's go ahead and uh, set up our transition, okay. So I'm going to say um, transition duration. Uh, you always want to have some duration. Right now it's just popping in and out. So I'm going to set the duration for this. It, you can set it in milliseconds or seconds. I'm going to use milliseconds. Uh, that's probably a good habit to get into. Uh, translations. I'm sorry, transitions in general, you probably want to keep them between a quarter of a second and a half a second. So 500 milliseconds is a half a second. 250 milliseconds is a quarter of a second. Um, you don't really want them to last a second. Uh, people start noticing when they last more than a half a second. So you know, people start noticing in a bad way when they last more uh, than half a second, usually. So I'm just going to say transition transition duration equals half a second and now wow that's actually sliding in um kind of surprised so it's just oh i think i know why it's doing that so it's doing that because when i put this transition duration here it is applying to all the p properties it possibly can um, and really the only property that it can apply to is um, transform and maybe box shadow. Okay. So it's kind of hard at this point to detect the box shadow. Maybe if I get on here and, well, the box shadow is there regardless. So, I mean, it can't be change it's not changing you can transition through a box shadow but mm, the box shadow is exists whether the menu is open or closed okay so really the transform is the only one but it is good practice um, to when you do the transition duration uh, do the transition property Okay, and the transition property is going to be transform. All right, so now 
I'm basically saying to uh, the the browser, just transform across. Uh, I mean, just transition across the transform property. Okay, don't worry about the other properties, and you know that's just good practice in terms of performance and and things like that. So um, yeah, get in the habit of putting the transition property in there. And the last thing is uh, the transition timing function. That's another thing you typically do. Transition timing function. Uh, and usually this is just, you know, you can do a whole bunch of clever things with cubic beziers and, and stuff like that. But uh, usually it's just, do you want linear? Do you want it to ease in? Do you want it to ease out? Do you want it to ease in and ease out? And a lot of times you just want it to ease in and out. Okay. Uh, if you're doing something that's, you know, more or less a linear transition, uh, uh, transition. that's kind of the, the, the default uh, value there. Okay, so now um, it should be, you know, pretty much the same thing going on here. All right. So now let's tweak this. So we got the transformation. We got the transition going. Um, so now let's tweak this. One of the things, actually, it's more visible. Now let's fix that right. Okay, I'm going to go back to negative 1 rem okay remember that's that padding on the right side of that flex box okay and now look at that that's actually perfect that's where i want that hamburger menu now it's right on the uh right on the edge ah, i kind of like that a lot so and now it's off the screen but actually if uh, I don't know if you can see this on a video, but it's off the screen, but you can still see the box shadow there. So that's not a good thing. Um, I'm saying it has a box shadow all the time by this. So I'm going to put the box shadow here when the main menu is open. And I'm not sure if Okay, now the box shadow disappears. All right, so let's see what happens. All right, so, I mean, it's, it's hard for, to see, but, I mean, the box shadow is popping in. So you could say box shadow none here and then add a transition. Uh, if you wanted to, but I mean, it's so hard to see that the box shadow is just popping in, you know, right before um, the menu sliding in that I, I wouldn't worry about that. Uh, so there's a couple more things to take care of. One is that we're still having this problem. This is off the screen. We don't want to have to scroll uh, the browser. We don't want to have to deal with that scroll wheel. So what you do in cases like this, um, you figure out what, uh, what is, that's because there's overflow here, all right? So this submenu or this panel is actually outside of the, entirely outside of the body, okay, of our web page. And uh, it's overflowing the body, and by default, HTML is designed so that it assumes, you know, if you write something in HTML, that people want to see it, all right? So it always lets things overflow uh, as much as possible. Well, you know, you know, because when we design things, we might not want that. Um, there's a way to fix that. And the way to fix that here is to go all the way back to the CSS of the body and say, you know, overflow on the x-axis is something we want to hide. We do not want uh, to be able to see that. All right. And I have this global CSS um, open here, and I actually have that commented out. I was testing it out. 
Um, so I'm just going to comment overflow x hidden back in. Remember, this is on the body of uh, the web page. So anything that overflows in either the, the positive or negative x direction on the, um, on the body is going to be hidden. So you just have to take that into consideration. Uh, and now when I save this, Uh, when I save this, I thought that would disappear. Well, let's try it this again. Uh, let's try it like this, and let's see if it... Okay, now it disappeared. Now there's no more scroll bar, all right? And that is beautiful. That's exactly... That's exactly what I want. Um, the only thing I'm seeing right now that kind of bugs me is I got one rem of padding right here and I think I'd like one rem of padding between the hamburger icon and the panel. If this was a hover menu I really couldn't I couldn't do that because I would hover over the the icon or I'd hover over the button and then there'd be a gap between that and the menu and um, the menu would or the panel would disappear uh, before I could get to any of its items. But since this is a hamburger menu and uh, you know everything is just staying fixed, uh, I can put that uh, little gap in now. So I'm going to do that by putting a margin top um, of 1 EM, 1 REM on this. I'm sorry, I want to use REM. Uh, because I know that's not going to change. Okay. And uh, that looks just beautiful to me. 